Good day everyone! Today, we are going to talk about the matching type test. What do you mean by matching type test? The matching type test class is similar to the multiple choice test. This type of test consists of a column of keywords presented in the left side of the page and a column of options placed at the right side of the page. The matching type of test class may be considered as modified multiple choice type items where the choices progressively reduce as one successfully matches the items on the left with the items on the right. Students are required to match the options associated with a given keyword or keywords. Matching type of test provide objective measurement of students' achievement and it also provide efficient and accurate test scores. Class, the items in the first column are called premises and the answers or options in the second column are responses. By convention, the items in column A are numbered and the items in column B are labeled with the capital letters. Now, when to use matching type of test? Class matching type of tests are effective when you need to measure the learner's ability to identify the relationship or association between similar items. They work best when the course content has many parallel concepts. So it is applicable for terms and definitions, objects or pictures and labels, symbols and proper names, causes and effects, scenarios and responses, principles and scenarios to which they apply. Now here are the advantages and disadvantages of matching type test. Let's start with the advantages. First, provide objective measurement of student knowledge. Allow the comparison of related ideas, concepts, or theories. It is great for users who have a lower reading level. For matching type of test, less chance for guessing than other question types. It is more engaging for users, easy to grade on paper, and easy to read. Now, let's move on to the disadvantages of a matching type of test. It is time-consuming for user taking tests, especially if test is timed. Can take time also in creating questions. It is disengaging for the user if having to search through too many matches. It may overestimate learning due to the influence of guessing. And lastly, it may limit assessment to lower levels of understanding or we call it the lower order thinking skills. Now, here are the rules in constructing matching type tests. Rule number one, check your objectives to make sure this type of test is appropriate. It is very important class to really go back to your objectives if it really matches your chosen type of test. Remember, assessment should be aligned or should be matched to your objectives. Rule number two, like any other test, the directions of the test must be given. The examinees must know exactly what to do. So you have to make sure, class, that your directions or instructions are clear. Rule number three, use numbers to identify the items in column A and capital letters to identify response in column B or vice versa. Rule number four, match homogeneous, not heterogeneous items. The items to match must be homogeneous. If you want your students to match authors with their literary works, in one column will be authors and in a second column must be literary works. Rule number five, the premise, which is longer in construction, must be in the first column, while the response usually shorter, must be in the second column. Rule number six, the responses class must be more in number than the premises to prevent the student from arriving at the answer by mere process of elimination. 
So if you have 10 premises, you should have 11 or more responses. Rule number seven, to help the examinee find the answer easier, arrange the options alphabetically or chronologically if it is in date or time, whichever is applicable. Rule number eight, avoid using pattern in the correct answers. Rule number nine, all of the responses and premises for a matching item should appear on the same page to avoid confusion to your students. Class, there are two types of matching type of test. We have perfect match and imperfect match. Let's start with the perfect match. It means when the number of items in the premises column is equal to the number of items in the response column. For example, you have 10 items in column A and your column B should also have 10 responses and that is equal and that is perfect match. On the other hand, when we say imperfect match, it is when the premises column has less items than the response column. So if you have 10 items in your premises or in column A, your responses should be 11 or more in column B. Class, it is advised to use an imperfect match as much as possible to avoid the mere elimination or guessing of the students. Are you learning? I hope you are. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something and good luck in making your matching type of test. See you in our next session. Bye!